Welcome. In this lecture, we're going to discuss one of the most important and final big tenets of object-oriented programming, and that is polymorphism. Polymorphism in C++ is expressed with inheritance, within inheritance hierarchies, and it polymorphism is the base of the statement program to an interface, not an implementation. Process objects of classes that are part of the same class hierarchy as if they were all objects of their hierarchy's base class. This is called the Liskov substitution principle, and it is a key tenet of object-oriented programming. Polymorphism works off base class pointer handles and base class reference handles, but not off name handles. So you use it with pointers and references, but not just normal variables. Relying on each object how to do, know how to do the right thing in response to the same function call is the key concept of polymorphism. Let me repeat that. Relying on each object to know how to do the right thing in response to the same function call is the key to polymorphism. The same message sent to a variety of objects has many forms of results, hence the term polymorphism. Polymorphism helps us design and implement systems that are easily extensible. New classes can be added with little or no modification to the code that uses them as long as the new classes are part of the appropriate inheritance hierarchy. The only parts of a program that must be altered to accommodate new classes are those that require direct knowledge of new classes added to the hierarchy. In other words, you only have to change the code that knows which classes it actually uses. So, Base classes and child class pointers can be aimed at base class and child class objects, and these pointers can be used to invoke methods to manipulate these objects. An object of a derived class can be treated as an object of its base class. Despite class, child class objects being of different types, this compiles because each child class is an implementation of its base class. We cannot treat a base class as any of its derived classes is a relationship applies from a derived or child class to its ancestors. So let's take a first look at uh, our polymorphism, first polymorphism example, and we take what we did in the prior examples with this commission employee and base plus commission employee, and what we're going to do here is display, you know, let's get this little more screen real estate. We're going to display our base class. Uh, we're going to use the toString method here on base class as well as the toString method on employee, and then the toString method on the commission employee pointing to a base, base plus commission employee. So here we go. We get the base salary commission employee. We get calling two string with the base class pointer, calling two string with the child class pointer. It invokes the child class two string function, um, and calling two string with a base class pointer to a child class object invokes the base class two string. Even though ideally we'd like it to call the two string on the actual child class. So there are definite issues here. How do we get around those? Well, the, there's a couple ways to get around it. The compiler will allow, the only way you can get to a child mem member function via base class pointer would be to downcast a child pointer to a base pointer, or a base pointer to a child pointer. Downclassing allows a child's class specific operation on a child class object pointed to it by a base class pointer. After a downcast, the program can invoke child class functions that are not in the base class. The easiest but absolutely most dangerous way to downcast is to just use the original C style casting. You give it the base class name, or the, the child class name with a pointer, and you cast the actual current pointer to that type. This has risks when we talk later about dynamic casts. So, the way to get around these issues are to use what are called virtual functions. So, suppose that shape classes such as circle, triangle, rectangle, and square are all derived from the base class shape. Each of these classes might be endowed with the ability to draw itself. 
but the function for each shape in order to draw them is quite different. In a program that draws a set of shapes, it would be useful to be able to treat all the shapes generically, or generally as a set of objects, on the base class shape, and to draw each shape, we would use a base class shape pointer to invoke the function draw, and we want the program to determine dynamically at runtime which child class function to draw. Use based on the type of the object at runtime, at any given time. This is polymorphic behavior. So in order to enable polymorphic behavior, we declare uh, functions of the base class that we want to be overridden as virtual functions, and we override draw in each of the child classes. An overridden function in a derived class has the same signature and return type as the function it overrides in its base class. If we declare the base function as virtual, we can override that function to enable polymorphic behavior. We declare a virtual function by preceding the function's prototype with the keyword virtual in the base class. Invoking a virtual function through a base class pointer or reference. If a program invokes a virtual function through a base class pointer to a child class object or a base class reference to a child class, the program chooses the correct child class function dynamically based on the object type, not the pointer or reference type. This is known as dynamic or late binding. When a virtual function is called by reference, a specific object by name, by referencing a specific object by name, and using the dot member selection operator, the function invocation is resolved at compile time. This is called static binding, and the virtual function that is called is the one defined for or inherited by the class of that particular object. This isn't polymorphism. This is static binding. Dynamic binding with virtual functions occurs only off pointers and references. So we're going to modify commission employee and base commission employee to declare the earnings and string to string function as virtual. Because earnings to string are virtual in class commission employee, class base plus commission employees earnings and to string functions override them. Base, class, uh, base plus commission employees earnings and to string functions are declared as override. So we'll look at this in, in another demo. So we've got our first demo. Come back to sample two. And here, what we're going to notice is in our base class, we define our functions earnings and string and to string as virtual. And then we go to the implementation. And here in Commission Employee, when we look at um, to string, it, it is implemented here, and earnings is implemented here. These are our base class definitions. But when we come down to base plus commission, here we def define these functions as virtual and put the override keyword, meaning we're overriding the base class. So here in the implementation, when we come down to double base, uh, it, uh, um, earnings and to strength, because we declared them as override in our class definition, these will be called dynamically. So here, when we run our code now, when we call to string on on our shared pointer, it will call the the version of shared to string on the base class here. Calling virtual to string class pointer to child object invokes the child class function on that child class object. And that is the true heart of polymorphism. Problems occur when po using polymorphism to process dynamically allocated objects of a class hierarchy. If a child class object with a non virtual destructor is destroyed with the delete operator, um, the standard says the behavior is undefined, as in what happens happens based on whatever implementation of C++ you're using. Uh, the simple solution is to create a public virtual destructor in the base class. If a class destructor is declared virtual, derived class destructors are also virtual. If an object in the hierarchy is destroyed explicitly by applying the delete operator to a base class pointer, the destructor for the appropriate class pointer is called based on the type of the object. Same basic concept. When a child object is destroyed, the base class part of the object is also destroyed. So the destructors of both child class and base class must execute. The base class destructor automatically executes after the child class destructor. 
So we define it like this. The structure definition will also be written as follows. Virtual commission employee destructor equals default. You tell the compiler to explicitly generate the default version of a default constructor, copy constructor, move constructor by following the special member function prototype with equals default. Usually, useful when you define a constructor for a class and still want the compiler to generate a default one. So, in that case, add the following declaration to your class definition. The class name equals default. In C++, there are 11, the concept of a final um, class, it, it, or final function exists, and it can't be overridden. So, you, we can say we have a function in our base class that can't ever be overridden, and we use the default implementation. You can also declare a class as final, and it can't be used as a base class then. If you attempt to override a final member function or base class, you will get a compiler error. So, a lot of times in code you'll find yourself using types fields and switch statements. You'll put a field in your object, in your class called type, as in this is a person, this is a customer, this is an employee. A better way to do this is to use um, polymorphism. Um, the problem, because every time, if you have it in 10 places and you need to modify it, you have to modify 10 switch statements. So, um, instead, we can define these functions on, on a class and then we can um, call the class as a virtual, uh, call the function on the class as virtual. So you don't have to know the type. The object knows its own type. So, for example, um, app, okay, so now we move on to what are called abstract and pure virtual functions. Sometimes you need to define a class you will never instantiate. This is called an abstract class. Because these classes are normally base classes, we refer to them as abstract base classes. They can't be used to instantiate objects because they are incomplete. Derived classes must define the missing pieces. So you can't say new abstract class. It's a base class from which others can inherit, inherit and classes that can be used to instantiate objects are called concrete classes. Such classes must define every function they use. So abstract, abstract base classes are too generic to define real objects. We need to be more specific where we can think of instantiating objects. Example, if asked to draw the two-dimensional shape, what shape do you draw? Concrete classes provide specifics that make it possible to instantiate objects. Like a circle, which is a type of two-dimensional shape, we know how to draw that. A class is made abstract by declaring one or more of its virtual functions to be pure. A pure virtual function is specified by placing equal zero in its declaration. Uh, it's a pure specifier, and they do not provide default implementations usually, although it is not disallowed. Um, each concrete derived class must override all base class pure virtual functions with concrete implementations. Otherwise, it'll make the derived class also abstract. The difference between a virtual function and a pure virtual function is a is that a virtual function has an implementation and gives the derived class the option of overriding, but a virtual perfect does not have an implementation and it is required that it be overridden. Pure virtual functions are used when it does not make sense for the base class to have an implementation of the function, but you want all concrete derived classes to implement the function. And we'll give it a demo of this. Here we've got our good old-fashioned uh, base classes. We, but this time we're going to define an abstract class um, with a virtual constructor and destructor. But here, earnings, we say this must be overloaded. So we make it pure virtual by saying equals zero. And that insists that we overload it. So now if we come to commission employee, for example, um, here we actually do do the overloading of um, 
earnings, and so forth with salary employee. And what this does for us is we can now, here's a good example, we now set up a vector of employees, employers, pointers to employees, right? And we set them up to one employee is a salary employee, one employee is a commissioned employee, and the other one's a base plus commission employee, right? And then um, we loop through our employees and we call two string on each of them and it calls the appropriate calculation method. Um, and here's another example. We actually do downcast the pointer um, and call it on the downcast as well. So, and so if we run it, here we go. Not only do we, um, we see that um, it's calling the appropriate two strings. For example, here we've got the new base salary, etc. But we're also seeing when it deletes the objects. So the enhanced payroll hierarchy, uh, a company places employees weekly. The employees are three types, salaried employees, pay a fixed weekly salary, commission, get a full percentage of sales, and base salary plus commission receives a base salary plus a percentage of sales. The company wants to implement a C++ program that performs its payroll calculations polymorphically. We use abstract class employee to represent the general concept. So here's employee, like we saw. Um, salaried employee and commission employee inherit from employee, and which is an abstract class. And base plus commission employee in, inherits from commission employee. So as we declared before, we declare uh, employee and we set its uh, earnings method to be virtual. And we assign the address of an employee's object to an employee pointer and invoke the earned function, earnings function. Uh, in the concrete class, we actually have to build the concrete with, we're going to talk a little bit about polymorph oops, polymorphism and runtime type information with downcast. Dynamic cast and type ID. If an employee points to an object that is a base commission employee, then that object address is assigned to the child class pointer derived pointer, otherwise no pointer is assigned. Dynamic cast rather than static cast is required here to perform type checking on the underlying object. Come back here. Here we do a dynamic task, a cast from um, for uh, one of the employees and determine whether the element points to a base salary commission, we can say if the conversion failed, essentially, then we use the, um, if it exceeds, we use the new stuff. Otherwise, we don't do anything. With static cast, the, the program would attempt to increase every employee's base salary, resulting in undefined behavior. Static does not respect the dynamic nature of things. So type ID returns a reference to an object of class type info that contains the information about the type. It's operand including the name of that type. When invoked, type info member function name returns a pointer based string containing the type ID's argument, i.e. class base plus commission employee. 